Think water. Think shark. But there's more to these feared beasts than the great white. Sharks and rays come in many shapes and sizes, and nearly 400 different kinds of sharks patrol our waters. What these creatures do in the deep was hidden and secret until now. in the water and were gripped with fear. It can mean only one thing. The most ferocious predators of the seas are in our midst. Silently, great white sharks can come out of nowhere. They can reach 5,000 pounds and 20 feet in length. If their size isn't intimidating enough, they have powerful jaws and rows and rows of razor-sharp teeth. But a glimpse of the great white is just the tip of the story. There are more than 370 other kinds. Sharks and their cousins, the rays, make up a family with a notorious reputation. And like all families, they've got their secrets too. A coral reef in the Bahamas the ominous shadow of a fierce predator, a tiger shark. Known for attacking humans and one of the most dangerous sharks around, it's one of the few that will take on a heavily armored sea turtle. With its strong jaws and serrated teeth, a tiger shark can saw apart the loggerhead shell. The turtle senses a stalker and picks up speed. gap narrows. Before the turtle gets too tired, it comes up with a new strategy. A surprising move, the loggerhead is the attacker. Those heavy jaws were designed for crushing, and the turtle snaps at the shark's vulnerable gills.
but the shark is persistent. The loggerhead swims toward the safety of the shore, clearly a veteran of shark attacks. Despite what we think, sharks are not always successful hunters. Their prey are savvy too. This shark is young and inexperienced, but it may return older, wiser, and more dangerous. In Pacific waters off Costa Rica lives a very different type of shark the white-tip reef shark. Little threat to humans, it leisurely cruises the coral reef, ignoring schools of snapper, for now. It's said that sharks must swim or die. When swimming, water flows over the gills, allowing a shark to breathe, but many sharks like white tips, can actually rest on the ocean floor. Muscles in their mouth pass water over their gills. Overhead, daytime hunters. Two large jacks are after creole fish. More join in. The commotion rouses the white tips. Like most sharks, white tips are opportunists and can't afford to miss out on a meal. A wounded creole fish escapes to the bottom. This is exactly what the sharks were waiting for. The white tips probe the rocks for hiding fish. Flexible, they can venture into cracks and crevices where jacks can't go. Sharks scramble about each trying to get to the food. But once the sun sets, the activity on the reef undergoes a dramatic change. The white tips turn into serious hunters, aggressive and... This shark is not a lonely hunter. A jack intentionally swims alongside it, using the shark as a moving blind for its daytime attacks. In fact, smaller fish often accompany sharks on their travels. Fish like these mackerel bump against the shark's sandpapery skin to rid themselves of loose scales and parasites. If that wasn't enough, Sharks and rays have fish living on them, like this shark sucker fish. Its dorsal fin works like a suction cup, so it can bum a free ride. In contrast to their reputations, certain sharks actually seek out social interaction. These scalloped hammerheads look for company in barber fish. Instead of fleeing, Barberfish rush to greet the intimidating sharks. The smaller fish help rid the hammerheads of parasites. It's a nice exchange. One gets an easy meal, and the other gets groomed. Their relationship challenges the stereotype that sharks are mindless killers. Emerging from the blue depths, 
the largest fish of all, a whale shark, 50 feet long and 30,000 pounds. With an entourage of golden jacks and remoras, it's more like a roving reef than a single fish. Although sharks are fish, what sets them apart? There are important distinctions. Most fish have hard, bony skeletons. But sharks and rays are entirely boneless. Instead, they have skeletons made of flexible cartilage. Bony fish, like this grouper, can hover in one place and even swim backwards something no sharks can do. Most bony fishes have an air bladder that controls their buoyancy. Sharks lack this organ. A shark has only one choice, swim or sink. Compact bodies and superb mobility have aided in the success of bony fishes over 24,000 species strong. Although outnumbered, sharks too have evolved many sophisticated adaptations and a legacy three times older than dinosaurs. A Caribbean reef shark, a classic shark, sleek and intimidating. But they come in a surprising array of shapes and sizes, like this odd-looking ratfish, an ancient relative of sharks. It too has a skeleton made of cartilage, not bone. But it has teeth more like our own lower front teeth than those of a great white. Most sharks have five pairs of gills. This one has seven, much like its ancestors of 300 million years ago. But hammerhead sharks have the most bizarre design. Their broad heads provide lift, like an airplane wing. Larger hammerheads use their hammers to bash prey and to pin their victims against the ocean floor. Another shark that doesn't fit the mold. The angel shark's pectoral fins are wide, its body flattened. But evolution has taken this design to greater extremes in the rays. While rays share many features with their shark cousins, their fins and body have merged into a single, flatter design. In nearly every species, the ray's mouth is on the underside of its body. So are its gills. The largest and most majestic swimmer among rays, the manta ray. Although they look slow, mantas are powerful swimmers. More than two-thirds of the Earth is covered by water, and most of it is crossed by ocean travelers, like pilot whales. These whales are often followed by sharks who hope to scavenge a meal. This silky shark travels huge distances in search of food. Manta rays, too, travel over the expanse of the ocean, straining the sparsely scattered plankton along the way. One of the strangest sights in the sea, a sunfish, a gentle, curious, and delightful creature. A salp chain drifts with the current. Out of nowhere, a blue shark emerges. It closes in on a floating patch of kelp, the only landmark for miles around. The half-moon fish are busy courting, unaware that they've caught the attention of the blue shark.
But chasing healthy fish in broad daylight is a poor use of energy. The shark would probably lose out in such an attack. It's a smart predator that knows when to reserve its strength. Sharks inspect things with their mouths. Inspection completed, the shark moves on. Nearby, a dead fish floats on the surface. The smell of death in the water alerts the shark. It can hone in on a carcass a mile away. A huge gaping hole, the unmistakable bite of a shark. All oceans are crossed by shipping lanes. Passing boats sometimes discard foreign objects, and suddenly the sea offers up strange rejects, like a mango. After traveling across miles of empty ocean, when an oceanic white tip comes across something, it has a survival obligation to investigate. The mango gets the brush off. But this shark can't afford to decline even a small morsel. It never knows where its next eating opportunity lies in this great expanse of open sea. Fishermen know all too well how sharks will seize the moment, and with it, their catch. A struggling fish is a magnet to sharks. Sharks have highly remarkable senses that can hear, feel, and smell prey from long distances with shocking accuracy. The fishermen move on, but there's no escape. What's worse, fishermen have unwittingly trained sharks to follow in their wake by tossing fish scraps overboard. To fishermen, sharks are not just mindless eating machines, but clever hunters. The gentle calm above the ocean offers no clues to the incredible dramas that lie just beneath the surface. Off the coast of Southern California, during the winter months, the waters cool. The moon changes cycles. The night of the squid has arrived. Millions gather in ghostly hordes to mate and lay eggs. Pelagic stingrays swoop in and out of nowhere to feast on this annual bounty. Amid the swirling mating squid, a female anchors her egg case to the ocean floor. Eventually, the adults drift to the bottom all their energy spent in their final act. Stingrays glide among the squid, gorging on adults that are alive, dead, or dying. But they show no interest in the egg cases. The commotion attracts many rays to this luminous garden of eggs, like this thornback ray. A 
A bat ray has eaten so much, it can't move. One of the many players in this seasonal dance of life and death. Another night hunter roams the ocean floor. It's an octopus who doesn't know a camouflaged and dangerous shark waits in ambush. An angel shark. This octopus gets lucky. It crosses over the shark's back end, too far away from the shark's mouth to be attacked. A lobster gets dangerously close, but prey have to be the right size, in the right place, at the right time, or the shark won't move. The angel shark is so well camouflaged, a halibut parks right on top of it. The shark doesn't move a muscle. The halibut is at the right place, but it's the wrong size. The shark has the patience of a practice killer and knows just when to strike. The blacksmith fish never knew what hit it. Angel sharks around the world are hidden demons for the unwary. Their teeth curve backwards, so there's no escape. This Australian angel may not eat again for days. Australian reefs abound with fish and other marine life. These waters also teem with sharks. A cuttlefish hovers over a shark's hideout, a sniper's alley in the rocks below. This pudgy toad-like fish is an expert killer, a wobbegong shark. Wiggly projections around its mouth resemble seaweed fooling prey into thinking it's a place to hide. These spots help make it disappear into the reef. A passing Morwong senses an assassin. This cuttlefish sees the predator and keeps just the right distance. But the shark waits it out, biding its time for less savvy prey. A moorwong has entered damselfish territory. The small fish chase it away from their nests. The moor wong flees the scene, escaping from the frying pan into the fire. bottom dweller that lives so far below it's never been observed in the wild before. A saw shark with a snout that looks like a power saw. From it hang two long sensory organs used for feeding and tasting.
The sharks use their sharp, spiky snouts to slash at fish and dig up the bottom in search of prey. It probably has other uses, but its intimidating appearance hardly matches the shark's shy demeanor. Another fascinating species which we sadly know very little about. The oceans hold hundreds of different kinds of sharks, most of them unknown. But they also hold even more, over 500 species, of rays. A group of rays called electric rays are sluggish swimmers. Like all rays, they differ from sharks by having their gills underneath their bodies. They rely on deception and often disappear in the sand. Instead of speed, these rays carry a concealed weapon that makes them highly effective predators. These rays are armed with two honeycombed organs filled with a jelly-like tissue. Together, these organs can deliver an electric shock of more than 200 volts. The ray grabs, then shocks the fish, paralyzing its prey. The ray swallows the fish whole, then disappears. Under the cover of sand, it quietly recharges its batteries. But there is one group of rays that inflicts more injuries on people than all other sharks and rays put together. They lie in secret in shallow waters around the world, including here in the Bahamas. Stingrays. Southern stingrays avoid sharks at all costs. They are a favorite item on their cousin's menu. This stingray has a venomous barb six inches long on its tail. Others sport them up to a foot long. Except for this defensive weapon, stingrays are harmless. A shark sucker fish picks at one of the two openings atop the stingray's head. When fishermen step on them, Stingrays may defend themselves by driving their barbs right through the offender's feet. The wound can be extremely painful, but usually not life-threatening. Knowing all this, the fishermen must still enter these waters to make a living. A near miss. The fisherman was lucky this time. Other rays glide by, reaching 20 feet across from wingtip to wingtip and weighing 4,000 pounds. Manta rays are swift and gentle giants. Ancient mariners feared manta rays and called them devil fish. But their two frontal lobes aren't horns, they're used to help scoop food into their mouths. Moonlight attracts huge concentrations of plankton. This is what the manta ray feeds on.
In backflip after backflip, the ray dances for its dinner, plankton soup. The manta ray possesses a long tail, but it's harmless. There's no danger to divers who are mesmerized by its beauty. A graceful swimmer, it's also deceptively fast and can disappear with one flick of its wings. Ironically, the largest marine animals reach their immense size by feeding on the smallest foods the ocean has to offer. The basking shark. At over 30 feet long, they are the second largest sharks in the world. They're called basking sharks because they feed and loll about at the water's surface. Sightings of these gentle giants inspired stories of sea monsters. This shark is basically toothless. Its minute teeth play no role in feeding. They gulp down plankton and other tiny creatures. Despite their size, they're extremely docile and very safe to be around. When winter comes and there's less plankton, they're thought to quietly hibernate on the ocean floor. Sharks such as these dispel our notion that all sharks are terrifying predators. The largest shark in the world and the biggest fish in the sea is the size of a whale, the whale shark. Its enormous jaws are outfitted with thousands of tiny teeth arranged over many rows. It's a filter feeder too. Like most sea creatures, they're counter shaded light on the bottom and dark on top. It's not an easy animal to see, despite the fact that it's 200 times the diver's size. Fifty feet long, it's a living reef accompanied by schools of fish and dozens of remoras. Whale sharks live in open tropical oceans and live solitary lives. But at certain times of the year, as many as a hundred may congregate, creating one of the most spectacular sights of the sea. Since many sharks are bottom dwellers, to find and observe them is difficult. But here in the shallow waters of the Bahamas, we get a privileged glimpse into their secret lives. In springtime, nurse sharks come together to engage in courtship. They are normally found resting on the bottom, often in small groups. Although they can reach 14 feet in length, nurse sharks are remarkably docile. When they're preoccupied with mating, we get a rare opportunity to see their intimate habits. When it's time to mate, sharks gather together in droves. Lagoons lined with mangroves are a safe place for sharks to mate and bear young. Among the mangrove roots are small fish baby sharks can eat. A young barracuda is also safer here in the mangrove nursery than on the reef.
Sex for most sharks is a rough, even violent affair. Males often bite and harass females into submission. Male sharks fertilize the females internally. They hang on by biting a fin. The female tries to escape, but only gets rougher handling by the male. The male hangs on to his reluctant partner. He contorts to find his way inside the female, coiling his body around hers. In about eight months, a fully formed baby shark will be born. It takes years for sharks to sexually mature, and they have only a few young at a time, unlike some bony fish, which produce eggs by the tens of thousands. This female suffers visible scars on her fins, signs that she's recently mated. Nurse sharks bear live young, but that's not the case with all sharks. Along the California coast, families of sea lions are attracted by kelp forests. A heron stands on a kelp treetop. This canopy floats nearly a hundred feet from the ocean floor. Kelp is the fastest growing plant in the world, growing as much as a foot a day. Within this seaweed forest lives a very strange looking animal. Sensitive to light, it hides out during the day. It's a horn shark. Many of its neighbors are far more active in the daytime. But when evening comes, the shark wakes up hungry. Horn sharks know their home ranges well. They stay in the same neighborhood for months, even years. Bottom dwellers, they're small and sluggish. But you don't have to be fast to dine on crustaceans and mollusks. This one looks for food and comes across something most animals pass by. sea urchins, coated with sharp spines. Most animals, including horn sharks, avoid sea urchins, but this one dives right in. About one in 10 horn sharks relishes this very unlikely food. A sure sign that a shark is an urchin eater its purple teeth and the spines on its back are purple too two weeks have passed since this female has mated she's now ready to lay her eggs the tough spiral shaped egg casings are about five inches long they're the same color as seaweed, camouflage to help protect the baby shark developing inside. Usually, a horn shark lays her eggs among the kelp or wedges them between rocks. After that, while waves pound overhead, the eggs are on their own for nine months. Down below, the fragile embryos are nestled in crevices in the rocks, safe from the battering.
they are also safe from most predators. Snug inside its egg case, a little shark develops. One egg has been discovered by a pair of whelks, snails that often prey on the rich yolks. One of the whelks uses its long proboscis to probe and then drill a hole into the egg casing. It then sucks out the embryonic shark. A luckier egg is about to hatch. Baby shark is a near perfect miniature of its parents and born ready to swim. It meets up with other newborn horn sharks. While they're young, they prefer to stay together in shallow water. With a lifespan of at least 25 years, they must learn right away how to meet life's challenges like sea lions who also live in the same shallow water. They're curious about everything, including horn sharks. Playtime for sea lions can be life-threatening for this baby shark. Finally, the little shark survives the gauntlet of sea lions and heads out toward the open sea. Only to be snapped up by an angel shark and spat right out. Like its name implies, the horn shark has spines on its back that are very sharp. Whatever dangers the sea may hold for sharks, there is far more danger from above than from below. For a long time, shark fishing was small scale. Fishermen would catch enough for their local markets. It's still done this way in some places. But today, there is a huge international demand, especially in Japan and other parts of Asia. In a shark net off Mexico, a scalloped hammerhead has met its end. So has a silky shark. And another silky. When only a few sharks were taken at a time, their numbers could recover. When more are taken, shark populations plummet. Rays are fished as well. Rays and sharks are in grave trouble because unlike bony fish, they reach sexual maturity later and don't bear many young at a time. Their numbers can't recover quickly. 
Because of this, they shouldn't be viewed the same as other fish when it comes to commercial consumption. In recent years, the global shark fishing market has exploded, and one part of the shark is in great demand, its fins. Often, sharks are taken only for their fins. In Japan especially, they are believed by many to have medicinal value and to work as an aphrodisiac. There is no scientific evidence to support these beliefs. This shark was about to give birth. The death of this one female meant the death of many sharks. These fins are the prized ingredient for soup that has sold for as much as $150 a bowl in Japan. Shark fin soup now sells for less, becoming available for the masses. Factory fishing ships race to meet the demand. This shark's fins are being cut off. As a direct result of this practice, shark populations are collapsing around the world. Only the fins have been taken, yet the sharks are then thrown back into the sea, often still alive. But Asia is not the only offender. In the US and Europe, shark cartilage pills are commonly sold as health food. Their popularity grows in spite of evidence that they are nothing more than expensive placebos. Fortunately, there is another market, one that needs sharks alive. Sharks themselves are the bait for ecotourists. When people pay to see sharks close up, these animals are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars annually to a local economy. Now it's possible for adventurous sport divers to join in the thrill of shark diving expeditions in many places around the world. Those who experience these sharks close up in the wild almost always leave with a much greater appreciation for all sharks. At some resorts, the sharks are tagged in the hope that fishermen will recognize their true value to the community and release them back to the sea. Great white sharks are perhaps the ultimate draw in shark diving tourism. Think shark, think teeth, an endless supply of them. They replace teeth all their life as many as 30,000 teeth during a lifetime. To view great white sharks, a cage is definitely required. Although the great white is the most notorious shark known, there's a whole world of sharks out there. We have yet to uncover their many secrets. Some species, like this sand tiger, look ferocious, but are actually very gentle and fairly easy to approach. Yet we know so little about them. There are many sharks we rarely see, let alone study. This file tail cat shark is a deep water animal, largely inaccessible and mysterious 
like one-third of all shark species. The prickly shark is another little-known shark, one of nearly 200 other shark species that live in virtual anonymity. Today, all sharks live poised between survival and global threat. But sharks have been around for 400 million years. We can only hope sharks will continue to endure with their tenacity, intelligence, and other extraordinary qualities that only they know in their secret world. To learn more about what you've seen on this nature program, visit PBS online at pbs.org or America Online keyword PBS. Yes.